What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. If you're trying to decide what should be your first programming language or maybe your third programming language, or you just wanna know what among many programming languages are good ones to learn in this industry, then this video may help you out. So a paper was published the other day by the CISA or US Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency. And the paper is called The Case for Memory Safety Roadmaps. Essentially, memory safety vulnerabilities are the most common type of disclosed software vulnerabilities. The errors are well known, they're common, and they're routinely exploited. And their guidance in this paper is that organizations should be prioritizing design and development practices that implement memory safe languages. In another paper titled Secure by Design, published in October, they stated, manufacturers can take steps to eliminate one of the largest classes of vulnerability by migrating existing products and building new products using memory safe languages. C and C++ have been criticized a lot lately, especially with the rise of interest in competitors like Rust. And now the CISA is advising organizations to move away from C and C++ as they state that even with safety training and furthering efforts at hardening C and C++ code, developers, even seasoned developers, will still make mistakes that breed memory safety vulnerabilities. So they advise organizations to now utilize further training as a bridge until they can implement and transition to better technical controls like memory safe languages. Now, before we get to the languages that make up these memory safe languages, I'd like to explain what they mean by memory safety. Essentially, it's how a program manages memory to minimize memory wastage and boost performance. So with C and C++, you as the programmer are solely responsible for allocating and deallocating memory. In C++, memory is allocated at the instantiation of an object and deallocated when that instantiation of the object is no longer going to be used. In programming errors, in memory allocation can build up as the program executes and cause issues. Examples are buffer overflow, where data is accessed outside of the bounds of an array. In that case, an attacker can provide inputs that are larger than the allocated buffer size, causing the program to write data beyond the buffer's boundary. This can lead to control over the execution flow and arbitrary code could be executed. Another example is the use after free vulnerability, when a program frees memory that has not been initialized. Attackers can use the freed memory block to store malicious code and cause the program to access the reused memory block and execute that malicious code. There's also an initialized memory that can contain sensitive information, such as passwords or other confidential data, and attackers can exploit a vulnerability to read this sensitive uninitialized memory. But with memory safe languages, memory is managed automatically as part of the computer language. The programmer does not have to do it. It uses automatic predictions using a combination of compile time and runtime checks. And a downside to this is, of course, performance. Now, this isn't a hit piece on C or C++ or the developers that use it. Anyone who knows either one of these well or are are in the process of learning it will benefit greatly from it. And of course, the creator of C++ is fired back to this whole claim here with his own rebuttal and leaks can really happen in any language. But it is now the recommendation of the US cybersecurity experts to transition away from C and C++ when garbage collection is required. And companies like Microsoft and really anyone in a GovCloud will be following suit, as we're gonna see in a minute. So what are some of these memory safe languages that cybersecurity experts are recommending organizations to migrate to? Well, we're gonna look at six. Starting with number one, you guessed it, Rust. So about a month ago, a David Weston, who is Vice President OS Security and Enterprise at Microsoft and part of the CISAGOV Technical Advisory Committee, states, had a great time at doing a keynote on Microsoft approach to memory safety, made a huge announcement Microsoft is going big on Rust and spending 10 million to make it first class language in our engineering systems, plus 1 million Rustlang foundation. Huge move for security at Microsoft. So Microsoft's all in. And one of the reasons is memory safety. And I have to also mention about a year ago, the CTO of Azure wrote on Twitter, speaking of languages, it's time to halt starting any new projects in C, C++ and use Rust for those scenarios where a non-GC language is required, garbage collection. For the sake of security and reliability, the industry should declare those languages as deprecated. So Microsoft is all in, the CISA is all in, and US cybersecurity experts are all in on Rust. A note here about Rust, it's a compiled language. It focuses on performance, type safety, and concurrency. It has an ownership model. It has a borrow checker designed to ensure memory safety and prevent concurrent data races. While not perfect, the borrow checker system goes a long way to addressing memory safety issues at compile time. Rust has been getting a great deal of attention from several high profile technologies, including the Linux kernel, Android, and Windows. It's also used in apps like those from Mozilla and other online services such as Dropbox, Amazon and Facebook. So that's Rust. Number two, 
You probably guessed this as well, Go or Golang, which is a language I really like personally. So here we see Go is a cross-platform compiled programming language developed by Google and released in 2007. It's designed to be simple and efficient to use, and it's well-suited for developing concurrent and networked applications. It's syntactically like C, but with memory safety, garbage collection, and structural typing. Several high-profile companies have migrated from Python to Go, and apps like Terraform, Docker, and Kubernetes are written in Go. So that's number two, in an excellent memory-safe language to learn. Number three is C Sharp, which is another language I love. C Sharp is widely used for building Windows desktop and server applications, and is also available on Linux, Mac OS for 86, 64, and ARM architectures. Also a memory-safe language because the memory is managed automatically, which means you don't introduce bugs from having to do it yourself. Number four is Python, another great language to learn. Python was released in 1991. It's generally an interpreted language, though it can be compiled into bytecode. It's dynamically typed and garbage collected. It's frequently cited as the most popular programming language. It has to be noted though that many of Python's packages run C or C++ under the hood, which could introduce some issues, but they address that in the paper and I think they're okay with that. Number five is the language I never mentioned on my channel, but I don't hate it, and that's Java. Java is a garbage collecting memory safe language owned by Oracle and released in the mid 1990s. It's one of the most popular languages and is used in everything. As long as there's a JVM machine, it'll run. And then number six is Swift, which is Apple's programming language that many people started using instead of Objective-C for iOS apps. So it is intended to be a replacement for C, C++, and Objective-C, it is possible to incorporate Swift code into existing Objective-C code to make migration to Swift simpler. Swift is primarily used for developing iOS, watchOS, macOS applications. Apple claims that Swift is up to 2.6 times faster than Objective-C. Whatever, Swift is the next language. Now they did mention a couple more that aren't in this list. Uh, right here it says, examples of memory safe languages include Python, Java, C Sharp, Go, Pascal, Swift, Ruby, Rust, and Ada. So my point in this video is for security reasons, these languages aren't going anywhere. Rust, Go, Python, Java, C Sharp, they're all legit. They meet this roadmap that the CISA has proposed to all organizations, which is to move from managing memory ourselves to languages that do it for you. So what do you think? Are you learning any one of these six languages? Are you primarily a C or a C++ chat? Let's discuss below. If you found this video helpful, Give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.